Hey, I don't want to brag, but I still remember the best Valentine's Day gift I ever gave my wife. I mean, things were tight financially at the time, and she made me promise not to spend any money. So while she was at work, I cleaned the house, top to bottom, and I wrote her a poem. I wondered what to get my honey because she said don't spend no money. So because I married such a frugal spouse, I opted just to clean the house. Okay, so I'm not going to win a Pulitzer Prize for poetry, but it did the trick. We forget that love isn't about the grand gesture or the extravagant gift, but there's something else we've forgotten about love. The most famous passage in the Bible, John 3, 16, says that it was love that motivated God to give His Son for our sins. God loved us while we were sinners, not after we were good. And if we're going to reflect His glory and His goodness to the world, we're going to have to learn how to love others, even when they aren't very lovable. That means that we have to love people who are hard to love. And we all know someone who falls into that category. You're you're thinking of that person right now, aren't you? And right now, somebody may be thinking about you. But it's not just about who you love. It's about how you love. And this is where it gets tricky. In the last few decades, our language has been scrambled. The, the definition of thousands of words has been changed, sometimes so drastically that a word that used to mean one thing now means the exact opposite. The word the Bible uses for the highest kind of love is agape, It's love that's unconcerned with self and instead concerned with the greatest good of another. But love is one of the words that we've redefined. Now, it means that that if you love me, you'll accept and affirm and agree with whatever direction I choose to take in life, even if deep down you know that the direction I'm taking will not lead to my greatest good. If If you don't accept and affirm and agree, then you must hate me. The problem with that way of thinking about love should be obvious, but but few things are these days. So think about it this way. What if the CDC and the World Health Organization and the New, New England Journal of Medicine and several other respected sources of published peer-reviewed studies showing beyond all doubt that wearing clothing colored with a particular orange dye caused cancer, and that just happened to be my favorite color, and I wore it all the time. If you love me, what are you going to do? Well, hopefully the same thing you'd do if I was chain smoking cigarettes or driving without a seatbelt or planning to jump out of an airplane with a parachute because I think I can fly. I hope you'd love me enough to speak truth to me. That's precisely how Jesus loved people. He welcomed them. He embraced them. He included them. And he told them the truth. That's because truth and love, they're on the same team. Not a sermon, just a thought.